this is Fubar, and we're back at it today. Today we're going to be starting our beginner's guide, but before we start that, I want to wish everyone a good day, and I hope everyone is all right, and if you're not, I hope it gets better soon. So this is going to be a beginner's guide, or today we're on my 89.8 mil account, like I said before um, in the introduction video. And today, I, the reason why I'm using this account is so that way I can give you full access to everything so you can see where the game is currently at because this account is over 300 days old. So when you first log into the game, if you're a new player or you're starting on a new role in this game, you're going to have to go through some sniper missions and do XYZ to get through the tutorial. And as you're doing that, you got little chapter missions and everything that you're going to have to do. It's pretty easy, cut, dry, simple. So this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Now, once you start unlocking everything in your base, like barracks, hangars, and all these other buildings, there's actually a lot this game hides as far as buffs that you may not be aware of. Such as if you cl click on info on a barracks, and you click over here on info again, which is the little I, and you scroll up from one, and you start working your way down. At level five, you get a 5% troop HP buff for that one barracks. And then nine, you get, again, a firepower. Then 13, another HP. Then 20, another firepower. And then down to 27, and then down to 32. And the same thing happens with hangers as well. As you can see, mine's not even fully maxed out yet, but we'll get there. And as you can see, these this is not made publicly aware unless you're coming up on it. And also, you get nice little buffs from the AA Firebase. So getting to level 32 is huge. But there's a lot of changes in the game since I first started playing. Such as before, we didn't have the reserve barracks. And we also did not have the build index. Hold on. Hit the wrong button. I did not have the build index, which is a big deal. Because you need to upgrade the build, in, upgrade build index, which is the build points right here off to the side to upgrade your command center. So that's a little bit of a grind, but you will get there. So the biggest takeaway right now I want to explain is look at all the buildings, figure out their buffs, so that way you know which ones to prioritize. Me personally, when you're first starting out, I recommend prioritizing two barracks, one hangar, okay? You want to prioritize your Engineering center, your research center, your walls, your watchtower, your AA firebase, and your reserve barracks. All these right here combined will increase your survivability and everything about that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to consider is the units you're going to be using in the field. Now, the next big thing that gets you an advantage over everyone else is campaign story. Maxing out campaign story is huge. As you can see right here on the drill ground, I already have my campaign maxed. I cannot go any further. Okay? And you get these huge, nice little numbers here that you can spend in the store and get resources, bullets, gears even blueprints from this. But what is the best units to use in campaign? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. In campaign, when you're first starting out, I recommend using one infantry, one tank unit, one ATG unit, which is Vanguard artillery, and then the martyr rocket truck because it's fast but it is squishy it takes a lot of micromanaging but it does but it does get you there get there quicker and it does do damage and then the last one i recommend the either the martyr howitzer or the liberty howitzer 
For Air Force, I recommend a Liberty Bomber and a fighter plane just to act as a decoy when there's fighters and also attacking the... There will be little AA fire bases in the map on campaign that you will need to take out. <clears throat> the next thing I would actually have you do once it's unlocked, and we're going to go through this on here. You want to look at camps. You want to read everything here for each one. Every single one of mine is max, so I'm only going to go through Liberty. This is huge because this is recently changed, and I'm going to explain it to you. Now, as a free-to-play player, you would want to focus on maxing this buff. So you're going to want to have one really strong unit and then you want to, well, you can tend it by the time you uh, open up to modern units, you're going to want to have three strong units. So you're going to want to focus one unit per camp. I recommend two ground and one air force, air force being a fighter. And then for ground, one tank and one uh, artillery piece. Okay. But back to this, <clears throat> I recommend level four to level five, you gain 15% damage and damage resist for your troops and your base when you have five Camp Liberty troops deployed. But here's the thing, that applies to all your troops as long as you have five of, that, of those troops deployed. So all eight of your units will get the buff and your base will also get the buff. So that's huge. Now each camp and this one I will switch over to other camps, will actually give you unique little perks for that camp. Like, for example, Camp Liberty gets a firepower boost and a speed boost. Vanguard gets a firepower boost and an HP boost. Now, Martyrs. Martyrs gets an HP boost and a speed now that we've gone through that, there's another little button in the same building called Manual. Select that. As you can see here, we got Legacy Units and Modern Units. When you first start the game, you're going to be using only Legacy Units. And after, I believe, 180 days, you unlock Modern Units. The server will unlock it. And you also will unlock new Officers. So here's, we're going to get to Officers out in a different video, but we're going to focus on Units now. What I recommend for everyone is to look through these units and figure out which ones you like. Okay. I would not recommend heavy tanks at all. All right. I also, I would, I wouldn't recommend tank hunters right off on the, on the, on the run either. Cause they, they both require a unique play style and they're a little bit harder to use. Okay. What I do recommend is medium tanks, not martyrs, because it takes too long to retrain, but either Liberty or Vanguard. All right, and we'll get back to this in a little bit, okay? But I would prefer you guys to build up a Vanguard or a Liberty medium. See right here it has says the camp bonus for this is Vanguard medium tanks train rapidly reinforced. That means they will train faster. And then it has enhanced firepower, which means you're gonna have more firepower. Now if you go over to Liberty Medium. Oh, wrong button hit the accidentally hit the wrong tab. You got rapid reproduction again, faster training. And then you also get a speed boost. But that is good because when you're playing on this battlefield, a lot of there's a lot of fast units that you need to catch, like rocket trucks, light tanks, other mediums. And the Liberty one is the fastest out of all three mediums. If you were to do a heavy, I would recommend the Liberty Heavy because it has a unique trait, which is called Siege, which means it does more damage to bases. In the beginning of the game, where a lot of people are developing through your level 1 city, your level 2 city, and your level 3, this tank 
can solo bases with the right setup and it is very effective okay so i want you to go through and read these on your own time and learn them now we're going to go over to modern units and this is where i'm going to talk to you very and it's going to get really serious when you're developing your army you need to start thinking about end game now we talked about the five the five camp five unit camp bonus and everything like that so you need to select a camp to have the units that you want and will function out a decent role now i'm not there at the end game yet and i and this game is a marathon, not a sprint. And so it's going to take time. So as you see on my account, I have a rocket truck. I have a modern bomber. I have a Vanguard fighter. And I have a Liberty helicopter. The, once my Liberty helicopter is 9.2, I will be starting a Liberty main battle tank. How do you build a main battle tank? Well, you got to get a legacy medium or heavy of that camp to 7.2 and then have the prototypes for pieces for that which is essentially sacrificing two seven star units to get it to modern okay now each infantry unit has unique perks for example the liberty one is balanced but also has a smoke screen and it can heal when outside of combat it does not regain troops it just heals the troops that are, are remaining in the unit while martyrs has actually a higher damage resistance when it's in bunker mode which gives it a very high survivability so if you like high survivability that's what i would recommend and then vanguard infantry does extra damage to armored units so any unit that has armor that could be light tanks helicopters main battle tanks super heavy tanks all that goes through now the I, main question i get a lot on my server with younger players and older players is what is the most balanced setup that allows you to field fight and to do base to base well right now sh is not looking too good and I don't recommend having an ATG in your base. However, ATG is getting a rework, but at the moment it's not that great. So what I recommend is one helicopter, one main battle tank, two howitzers, a rocket truck, one bomber, and two fighters. Now you can diversify that whatever way you want, but that's what I recommend. There are people out there who do five tanks. There are people out there that do three infantry. There's people out there that do five light tanks. But each unit plays a different style. And that goes for every single unit in this game. So don't just, when you start out and you're attacking players, don't just rush your opponents. Think. It is a strategy game. Take your time and think about the situation. Next, the reason why I told you to focus one unit and get that to the highest possible you can is because of arena. Your arena power score will increase based off your strongest unit, which will be my helicopter. And as you can see right here, that XV will give me XV units in arena. Now, you also gain more power from having awakened officers. I don't have that many awakened officers because I'm a light spender. And I'm prioritizing different things. And I'm waiting for the new officers to come out. Because right now we're in the process of getting the second generation officers. Okay. Next. The research you should be focusing on first and a level one city is industry and military. As soon as you unlock city honors, 
you should be focusing on doing your daily arms race and your battle honors and placing well. Okay. The reason why you want to do city honors is because once you max this tree out and you get to liber liberator, you get two times the rewards for battle honors, daily arms race and grand showdown, which is huge. These things can get, can get, give you a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. So, I can't actually open that up because the way this bar is, let me show you right here. If we go over to Battle Honors, as you can see, I didn't do this well today because I mistakenly used my coupons. But if we maxed that out, we would have gotten 5,000 gold, two officer statues, and 140 city contribution badges and along with everything else on that list that is huge another thing you should be focusing on is where do you spend your gold your gold should be spent on vip level your gold vip level when you're first starting out should be vip level 14 so you can awaken officers faster if you're at vip level 14 you unlock three officer statues a day with 30 to 31 days in a month, that could be 90 to 93 statues per month. And that is huge, huge, because it takes 720 officer statues to awaken a officer. So that's a big. But here's the other thing. Your end goal for your VIP level should be a minimum of VIP 20. This will take forever, but it is worth the grind. And the reason being is parts. You get three gold blueprint parts per day if you are VIP 20, which is big because I recommend you open them at when you have 10 blueprint crates each. So that way you can always guarantee yourself a gold plus part or a gold plus plus part. Okay. I really hope everyone enjoyed this video. We will be coming back to and it's part two of the beginner's guide later, later today or tomorrow. And I hope everyone's having a good day. All right. Peace.